Hi, and welcome back. And first of all, thanks to everybody who's made very positive comments about my channel and has helped me deal with the trolls and very negative comments that some people leave. As one person said, we are the silent majority and we love your channel. So thank you. And uh, it's been very, very reassuring and I will continue. Comments will still be down there, but I'm going to be a little bit more robust in deleting uh, abusive, racist, or just offensive comments. So just don't bother leaving them because they're just going to be gone. So there's a bit of an insight into how do my stories actually originate? Well, I read a lot and people send me stories uh, and this one is brilliant. So this came from my old friends, the NRO, the National Reconnaissance Office. They've decided to give NASA two of their spy satellites. Thank you very much. So Hubble, the space telescope, has come to the end of its life. There's not going to be any more repair missions that will go up while well, we don't have the shuttle anymore. But So it's not possible. But due to the harsh environment of space, Hubble will quite soon stop working. And there's not much out there to replace it. Now, you've probably heard of the James Webb Telescope, which is a massive project, and that slightly worries me. I mean, it's like fusion. <laughs> it's always 30 years in the future. Where is the James Webb Telescope? If you know the story of why it's really being delayed, let me know. I worry that it's actually being delayed because we're living in an era where science isn't really being funded properly. But let me know. But today, let's talk about this very generous gift from the NRO, the National Reconnaissance Office, to give NASA these two Hubble-type replacement telescopes. Now, you've heard it on this channel before. Hubble was part of a constellation of similar satellites that looked down on the Earth instead of looking up into space. And here's a new insight into how part of that technology worked. Now, you all know that Earth-based telescopes looking out at the stars, the stars twinkle. And that twinkling is caused by atmospheric refraction, which just degrades the image. If you look at the star, it's kind of shimmering. And so professional large telescopes on Earth, astronomical telescopes, now have something called adaptive optics. And that works by little actuators moving a mirror in sympathy to the twinkles in the atmosphere and making the image stable and sharp. Where did that technology come from? Well, guess, of course, the Hubble spy-type satellites looking down on the Earth had to look down through the atmosphere to a target on the planet. So they needed to take out the twinkle of looking down through the atmosphere, and that's where adaptive optics came from. And now scientists use it for looking up through the atmosphere. Who would have guessed? So why has the NRO got spare satellites? In fact, they've got three spare sitting in warehouses in the US. Well, they were going to be part of the Advanced Imaging Architecture Program which never happened. It was a very late era spy satellite, optical spy satellite, after synthetic aperture radar came out and we could see through clouds at night, the optical telescopes were less useful. But in early days of the SAR, synthetic aperture radar, they decided to have a optical twin telescope mirroring what the radar would see. And this was the role for these spare telescopes, but they never launched. I think the synthetic aperture radar was improved to such a high resolution that really the optical telescopes weren't necessary. And remember, optical stuff doesn't th see through clouds on a rainy day or at night. So it became obsolete and they got stored. So they've given them to NASA. But what will NASA do with them? 
But first of all, the NRO has taken out the CCD charge couple device and all the electronics out of this Hubble looking telescope. But they're going to give them the 2.5 mirrors and the structure of the telescope. And very interestingly, the spy satellites, unlike Hubble, had a movable secondary mirror to position what they were looking at. And they're very wide fields compared with Hubble. Instead of pointing just at a single point in space, they cover a much wider field. So is there possibly a use for a deep space wide field telescope? Well, of course, they've got a project for it. And that project is the Wide Field Infrared Survey Telescope, or WFIRST. Fantastic stuff. And the idea of WFIRST is to look for the, in, in the infrared signature for exoplanets the size of Jupiter that might be orbiting distant stars and also to search for the missing dark energy of the universe. Two massively important programs that they can use these ex-spy satellites for. And they're worth about 250 million US dollars each. And as I said, there's a third which just parts. So it is potentially a great program, but there's more. The W first project is the most logical use of these special telescopes, but they've got another project, which I think is really intriguing. With very, very little modification, what they could do is put the NRO spy satellites in orbit round Mars. And so you've got spy satellites around Mars, not for spying. I don't think there's much spy stuff to look at there. But for science, imagine the resolution that you'd get from a spooky telescope orbiting Mars. Top plan. I like it. And a final project, which I think is another good one, is to send these telescopes out to Mars, put them in orbit around Mars, the red planet, but get them to look between Mars and Jupiter at the asteroid belt to spot incoming death plunge asteroids which might interact with Earth. Yet another fantastic project. So thank you, NRO, for this generous gift. And hopefully it's going to work because where's the James Webb telescope? <laughs> That's the other thing that is a mystery to me. So if you know why the James Webb Telescope, Space Telescope, is so delayed, let me know in the comments. So stay tuned for these kind of films that don't talk about aliens, that don't talk about flat Earth, they talk about real science, but with a bit of a twist, slightly secret stuff I like. And if that's what rocks your boat, thank you for subscribing, because the truth is out there. Mm -hmm.